Welcome to our video series on SQL Server 2008. This video is being brought to you by LearningComputer.com. Today our topic is SQL Server 2008 Configuration Manager. Um, the format is, uh, of this video series is basically we will be showing you some PowerPoint slides and also showing you a demonstration of the actual product. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. The SQL Server Configuration Manager is uh, a configuration tool which is primarily used to configure SQL Server services, configure the network connectivity configuration, and also to the, configure the native client configuration. As far as configuring SQL Server services, you can start, stop, pause, and resume services using this tool. You can also configure services to start automatically or manually. You can disable the services and also change other service settings. Another important point is that you can change the account that the SQL Server services is running under. Uh, you can choose between local and domain accounts. We will uh, take a look at this a little later. You can also start SQL Server using trace flags and command line parameters. You can uh, finally view the properties of the services. So let's go ahead and do a quick demo. In order to launch this tool, we need to go to Start. And you go to all programs, Microsoft SQL Server 2008, configuration tools, and then the configuration manager. It's asking for my permission to run. I will hit click on continue. I'm using uh, this. Uh, SQL Server on a Microsoft Vista, so we will be getting some uh, dialog boxes. Here we have uh, essentially uh, launched the SQL Server Configuration Manager. On the left side, you'll see um, some of the main nodes. So right now, uh, the first thing we're going to be talking about is the SQL Server services. Uh, in the right pane, you will notice that all the um, different services that I'm running um, First thing I want to do is go ahead and um, turn some of these services off. The first one we have is the SQL Server Integration Services, which is the SSIS. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and select Stop. And then the next one is the Full Text Search Service. I'm going to go ahead and stop that as well. The two main services that I want to talk about is the, uh, the SQL Server, which is also the MS SQL Server service. This is the actual database engine uh, that, um, that needs to run before you can do anything. Uh, and then the next main um, service is the agent SQL Server agent service. Um, and that's currently stopped, which is OK. Um, so let's go ahead and look into the um, main service, you can right click on it, go to properties. Here you will notice uh, a, a few number of tabs. The first one is it's titled log on. And uh, before we talk about this, let us switch back to the uh, PowerPoint slide. One of the options for uh, using uh, the accounts to run services is the built-in account. Uh, you should really not use these for production systems. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, the different uh, local accounts um, just to tell you what they are. The local system specifies the local system account. This account does not require a password. However, the local system account may prevent the service from interacting with other servers. So that's one of the security risks that um, if you are running your SQL Server under this context, anybody that has access to that uh, machine uh, can uh, stop your service without really using a password. Uh, the next one is the local service uh, account. This specifies the local uh, service account. This account does not also require a password and it, it cannot really interact with other servers. So if you're running SQL Server in a domain environment, um, these are bad choices to begin with. And then finally, the third local account is the network service. 
and we recommend that you do not use the network service account for SQL Server or SQL Server agent services. And the final point is that um, you should really be using a local user or a domain account to run one of these services. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into the properties. You'll notice that for uh, for this particular SQL Server, I'm using a, a local account. Um, if if this was a domain, it would say something like domain slash whatever. And then I I went ahead and created an account called SQL Service. Um, then all it does is it's it's primarily used to run services. So this is not a user account. This is uh, called a service account, and that's uh, essentially how you want to be running uh, your SQL Server services. And so uh, you want to give it a strong password with a combination of numbers and special characters. Now, below this, you'll notice that the actual uh, service is running. If you wanted to go ahead and stop it, you can uh, do that. Um, Obviously, if this was a production service, you would not want to do that. So notice now the service is stopped. If you come back to your um, configuration manager, you'll notice that it stopped. I'm going to go ahead and start it again. Another option you'll notice is uh, pause. What that really means is that if you have, uh, maybe you're having some problems on the SQL Server and you don't want to disconnect some of the existing users, you can pause it. Uh, the concurrent users will keep working on the system, but uh, the SQL Server will uh, not allow new connections. Now if you go to the next tab, which is the service, this is where you can uh, change some of the other settings. It tells you the, uh, the path of where the service is running from. So um, if you were to use this uh, using a command line, you could possibly copy this whole uh, destination and use that from a command line. Uh, it tells you the name of the machine, um, what the service is, what the process ID is. Uh, and this is an important point. Um, if you were uh, using this SQL Server, in maybe a test environment, you could change the mode to uh, manual, or you could even uh, disable not the service, but maybe one of the other services that you're not using. Um, for production service, you're going to want to select automatic. And it shows you what the status is. <clears throat> uh, file stream adva and advanced are some other options that I will not be discussing at this point. So that's. Uh, that's how you uh, control your services. Um, so like I said, if you weren't using um, integration service on this machine, let's say, you can go to Properties, and you can go to the Service tab, and you can say that I really want to go ahead and disable the service. So you select your option, click on Apply, click OK. And basically, now the integration service is disabled completely. Now, let's say we wanted to change the reporting services to not start automatically. We can uh, go ahead and right click, go to properties, go to the service tab, change this to manual. So that uh, give you a little a little bit of information on how to control the services under the configuration manager. Let's uh, go ahead and switch back to the slides. Now the next thing we want to talk about is the SQL Server network protocols. Uh, there are uh, essentially four different protocols, so let's uh, look at them one by one. The first one is shared memory. This is the simplest protocol to use and has no configurable settings. This can only connect to a SQL Server instance running on the same computer, and it is really not useful for most database activity. The next one is uh, the TCP IP. This is the most common protocol, which is widely used over the internet. 